Hey everyone, welcome to today's session on short matching and cinematic grading in DaVinci Resolve. If you have ever struggled to get your shots looking consistent or just want seamless cinematic feel throughout your project, then you are in the right place. Today, I will guide you through the powerful tools and techniques in DaVinci Resolve that make short matching not only possible but incredibly rewarding. Whether you are working on a big production or a small project, you will learn how to bring professional polish to every scene and keep your audience fully immersed in your story. Let's dive in and unlock the secret to achieving that theme and consistent quality look. All right, so this is this was from a music video that you know I just shot, you know, recently. And um, let me bypass the grade. You know, you can see this was um, the flat profile that you know we shot. And then after my grading, this was what we arrive at. Of course, this was just not you know um, normal grading that um, would have been. I did some extra work, you know, just to achieve some you know blurry background and just some change my lens some anamorphic feel you know with my blurry background of course like like i said you know you can see what it looks like and then you know i didn't just grade you can see a whole lot of change this was the reflector i used in shooting you know behind the frame and i just felt like it is distracting my image you know this light as well too and you know we just created this and of course you can do the same thing if only you know you're willing to work so let me close my gallery my current timeline is set to davinci you know why rgb color managed my color processing mode is on sdr rec 709 output color space is on rec 709 of course you can choose to you know any of this just by you know the intuition but this is just a very this is just like a minute content that i you know did and i just you know, wanted to do it very fast. So, of course, I will just run through, you know, how this was color graded because basically we are not doing color grading. We are working on how to do a short match. So now that I've been able to achieve this kind of look and I want, you know, a better look for this, how do I color grade this and this to look just like it was, you know, graded in, you know, of, and at times, because at times when we, when we are done shooting here, and you are moving to another set or you are trying to shoot a complement set light is changing the mood is changing something is just changing because you have changed your frame so and you know how you can color match it is just what we are doing so i'll run through my process you know by which i graded them so the first thing i did was to group all my i grouped all my clips together and then i came to my group my group pre clip and then i did my noise reduction if you are new to DaVinci Resolve, or if you are new to my channel, you know, I specifically make some videos on all of this that you can go back and, you know, watch on my channel. Or if you have not even color graded before, then you've got to, you know, go back to some of my previous videos so that you would know how to start with all of this. Next thing I did was to, you know, do my color space transform. I dragged, you know, converted it into DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci White Intermediate. That was for my input. And then I now made an external node, which is my last node here. And with this node, I dropped another CST and then I converted it from DaVinci White Gamut into Rec. 709 and then Gamma 2.4. And the reason why I did that is just because I will be able to have a larger need, a larger color space, you know, for my color grading. I would uncheck every other node. All right. So, you know, after I did my color space transformed, which was my first node, you know, it will still look flat. And then the next thing I did was to create another node for my output node. You know, that was what converted it into Rec. 709. That was what converted it from a flat profile to Rec. 709. And then the next thing I did was to, you know, do my color you know, correction. After I did that, I used my HDR to do my white balancing, which I always prefer. It is always sub to when you are doing your white balancing here on like, you know, doing it in your primaries. In my future video, I will specifically make videos on adjustments you should do under your HDR view. So the next thing I did was, you know, my HSV, which is for my saturation, I like my saturation. And if you look at this style of saturation that I used, 
it is just the best and it is the best being the fact that the way the color works is just that it increased your color and then it, it reduces the luminance of your color at the same time and you know i did that by just changing you know the color space of the node that i was working with hsv which is hue saturation and then value which is the value of your color so after i did this i came back to you know my channels you know three channels h this is h channel one is my h and this is s which is my saturation and then the value so i just came here and then i you know turned these two channels off and then activated my saturation channel i came to my gain and then i pulled my saturation you can see the way the saturation works you know this yellow that was bright before and you can look at you can look at my scopes as well and you can see you know what changed there you know it is not so strong it's just very 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 soft too you can look at my scope from my parade and then the next thing i did was to add sharpness to my i made another parallel node and then you know that was where i did my sharpness but you can still you can see what the image looks like you know before and then you know after this was just what you can just ordinarily do by coming to your you know blow here and then you pull it down so you know regardless of what you might think i don't know how how what the quality youtube is giving to you right i love the level of the sharpness compared to when it was like this in fact there are so many things that you will know that is wrong with your image until you had another effect that is when you know that something is actually wrong you know with your previous image next thing i did was to qualify the skin i didn't do so much even on the skin it's just to ensure that the skin is you know falling on the right side uh can we use our qualifier here to see you know you can see where it is you know where my skin is and then if we are going to vector scope you will see where my skin is lying it is falling on the lines directly which is just you know what i want and then the next thing i did was just to reduce red on the model skin and then i reduced the luminance of all the color again on her face and then the last thing i did was to do a face refinement face refinement is very very essential you know it's it is just an effect it's a it's a free plugin in in davinci resolve that i usually would use for beauty you know you can you see what her face looks like you can look if i notice the teeth notice what her teeth looks like you know before and after look at her eyeballs look at her teeth and you know once you come to your effect panel and then you search for you know face refinement under your search bar and then you drag and drop it ensure you track your face and then the only thing i usually would do is just to come to my you know eyes i will increase the sharpening of the eyes and then increase the brightening and then i'll come to my teeth once you are done tracking it here it will automatically detect where the person's face is and then let me uncheck this you know I just increased the blue gain so that you know it would take away the um, colors in my teeth and of course you don't want to overdo that and i think that was the last thing i did in this note and then um you know of course i came to my hdr wheel again to do my grading so i pull colors into my shadows from my global you know in my global i moved towards green and then and then in my log wheels under my shadow knob i pull you know my shadow towards the side so that i can have some blue as well it is not just green thoroughly then you know that was now preference i now added my film look you know creator which is free as well it's a, it's a free plugin you know in davinci resolve as well then i still did some little adjustments which is just for you know vignetting just to ensure that my model is standing out and then this is the outside node for this particular node that is why you can see that it is masked you know it is gaining this output is over is 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 benefiting you know from this other node you know you, you can easily get an output node by pressing alt zero or you left click here and then you click on add outside node that was just what i did and then you know it could have just been the outside node only which is the opposite of this so and then i came to my search bar and then i you know search for lens blur and then you know if you come to the settings you see how i manipulated all of these settings and that was just you know what gave us this super feel at this background and of course since you know i made my vignette and i had already tracked you know the subject out after i made you know this power window around her and then i checked you know on my tracker i used tracker to track it through 
you know, I was just okay with it. That is why I could just come to the outside node and then I did every other thing I want, which just give it, in fact, it is looking like a light in POP that I cannot even describe. In fact, it was just randomly, it was not because I saw a tutorial, I saw someone that did it. It was just random, you know, tweaks on my DaVinci tutorial, on my DaVinci knobs and, you know, I was able to, you know, arrive at this, which I really, 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 really think I love. You can see, you know, just, you know, I was done grading, but just one effect, you can see, you know, what it, it gave it and, you know, you, you should just, you know, try that out. And then the last thing I did, which I had earlier explained to us, is just the out the output node you know i made the first one here which is my input node and here this node i'm not using it because i made a, i used a paid software to reduce the noise but it will just be too heavy to use so i've you know taken it out of you know my workflow let me delete it so these are just the nodes that i use in creating you know this powerful image there was no paid you know software here instead of using that paid you know software that removes noise that was why I came to the group quickly and then I did it here so that you do not feel like they are using a paid plugin to teach you tutorial. So now we want to short match it to, you know, this next image. So what I am going to do is just that I would um, probably, okay, I think I should have, or let's just keep a steel. Let's grab a steel here and then I would delete everything here. I will just leave one note. All right, so let's connect this back so it doesn't fill out, you know. Let me reset it. So this is our flat profile. We need to short match, you know, this image from, you know, this. We want it to, this is going to be the next shot and we want them to just, you know, look alike. So, you know, this has been graded and we just want the same feel, you know, on this. This is what everyone wants and this is what, you know, I really want when I started color grading on DaVinci Resolve. There, there were times that I would just, you know, not even care. After fixing one, I would just control A and then I would paste the grading on it all. It doesn't, it's just not the best option because your shots were shot, you know, separately. Of course, there are some shots that, you know, a grading might just go with the next one, you know, but there are some shots that you need to sit down and work on them separately. So these are just my own techniques might not apply to you know add to another colorist or whatsoever another person that might want to give you you know another advice on how to go by it but this is just my own formula what i've done that has worked for me so basically i usually would come here and i would tap on this just because i want to save time i would um you know click the two files together and then you'll come to your highlight here then you you instead of picking this normal highlight you're going to pick split screen so that you'll be able to see you know your shots side by side you don't want to you know be coming here to do a guesswork you are checking this and you are checking the next we will not do that so we'll do this and then we'll change it from our version and then we'll go to selected clips of course there are so many ways by which you can you know check clips side by side go on selected clips and then zoom you know it's in it is it will be very very good for you if you've got an external monitor to you know monitor all of these things so now we have two shots in one monitor this is our first shot and the first shot this is what is active right now this shot does not have any node yet With, whichever of your shots that is having this white bar around it means that is the you know active shot that you are working on don't forget that do not forget that so let's come back to our original note so you can see you know what we presently have and we want to you know short match them i would have to once you you know zoom out again it would you know on it would unselect by itself and you know i prefer to have the one we want to have at this side and this other one at this side you know it will still be there because we have selected selected clips so now first thing i just want to still do is just to you know control i'll click on the two sides and then i'll click on apply grid there is an option that i've seen online where people will tell you to use short match to this clip you know i've seen you know so many fast tutorial about it and there was a day i tried it they said you can use it to copy you know any look you know and as you can see this is not true this does not work of course if we are let me just judge by my you know parade if I'm looking at, look at my red here versus the red that I'm having for this next shot. And right now, my parade is having, if you are checking any of your scopes, 
you know, if it's be it your wave, your waveform, vectorscope, it will be giving you two informations because you know you are short matching two clips and you have selected two clips. So two two parades is what I am seeing right now. This is one red which starts from here and ends here. This is another red that starts here and then stops here. From my scope, you can know that this is wrong. And you know, even if you are looking into your screen. You know you can see that this shot is not the same look at the skin work look at whatever it has given you and you know one of the annoying thing that i do not like is everything is now compressed into one node so for no reason you should use that as an option for your grade please don't try to they will tell you how to still look in one minute it would only look like but sincerely it isn't you can see how clean my model skin is versus what I am having here. So please, if you are just a beginner colorist and you want to do your short matching, don't try this. So this is, I think we should, um, let me keep this as well. Let me grab a steel so that we'll be able to compare. Okay, or let me just, let me tap on this only. I will just grab a steel so that we'll be able to compare this result to the other result that I'll be showing you. So let's go back to our option and then... I'll come to I'll come to this node now. So now I need to if I need this to be active, you can see the node has changed. So I'll come to this node and then I'll reset the node. So you can see now that you know this one has been worked on. This is still a flat file. That is why the log is still, you know, is still very, very compressed. So what I would advise that you do is just to you know click on your two shots and then you know just go straight to apply grade. So that you can have all your nodes, all the sequence, all your nodes pipeline. You can have them all at once, you know, so that you just be able to now manipulate one from another. You can even see the blur effect that I had here. You can see what it is doing here, you know. So these are my, sorry I didn't even, you know, name all these nodes because, you know, I, I worked on them today and I just felt I could, you know, push it out as class. So the advantage that you get for this is you will have the same node pipeline you will have the same structure you know for your node you know and then you can then just come around and see what you need to in fact you can even from my scope from my scope look at my parade the results is very very close to each other already the results are very 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 close if i should come to my waveform as well look at my waveform look at the first clip which is here it ends here look at the second clip and of course, you can short, short match, you know, more than, you know, four, five, six, seven clips at a go. Just select them. Select them. It will add them to your frame. You can see. Can you see what I'm, can you see what I'm getting? So, and you can just use this to be, you know, fixing them one by one. You know, but today, just for this tutorial sake, would only stay on two. So now, I have the same structure for my node, and then I can start adjusting what is not what shouldn't be in this node so the first thing i'm seeing here even though i like it if i wish i had graded this work this way is that same blur effect that is here so but i can decide to take it out for now and you know the way i composed oh i'm on the other i'm on the wrong clip look at this so i can take away you know i can take this out because i do not need this now the way i did my power grade for this shot is not they were not framed the same way so i, I could just come here to see what i need to adjust so right now i will turn you know this off so then i'll just stay on one clip so that we can work you know on this now so i'll turn this two clip off those are my vignettes which i do not even need for now so i would look at i'll come back again i will zoom it in and see that okay this shot needs to you know be exposed the problem might not even be in exposing this you know right thing to do would have just been to you know come to my color wheels and then i would increase my gamma just for this shot you can see that it is getting close that may not even be the option because if i should come back to this same shot and then i am turning you know this off as well you can see that it is as dark to almost the same level so which means what we need there is just the vignette is just to draw a power window around it and then just lit this part of our body only instead of affecting the old area so i'll come to this shot and then, of course, it is going to leave, you know, the double screen now. So, I'll tap on. And one thing you should notice is, if you are under your power window while you are trying to do, while you are under this option, it will not give you. So, what you need to do is to, you know, turn it off first. And then, you'll come to, 
this node that you want to do your power grid on and then um, change your change your option to power window like i said the previous one the model was just in the center of this frame or can you see so but for this i will need to adjust this to fit into you know the, what this to fit into this model's face so that it can complement you know what i want so look at it now just before and then after and now i'm not raising this bar i have limited you know where i want to increase the exposure so which is just to our face so i'll come back to this again i would look at if i am close just for the brightness now okay it's not close so what i'll just do is i'll just come here and increase my mid tones a bit all right this this looks good so let me compare it all right the skin is still not close to each other the, the skin is not close it's, it's still not correct you know to what we have here but just with this you can even still see look at the yellow on our shirt you know it's, it's giving us an insight on let me go to vector scope look at the yellow look at how spread the yellow is look at this as well you know it's telling you that they are very 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 close you know already so let's move to the next thing let's get back on the same selected clips again so let's look at it okay so look at my shadow look at where my blues are so look at my blues look at the blues that we have here as well you know look at the shots i think i love this i would just love to keep this here and one thing you do not want to forget to do is the model might move up you know if the if this subject is going to move it's going to affect your power window so it is always advisable that you should track it in and out can you see it will not work now because you know i'm still on that here so i'll turn this off i'll come back here and ensure that my power window is selected and then i'll track it in and out and davinci resolve is one of the software that will give you a lot of point markers and it will not stress you i'm done tracking you know then let's come back to our our two clips you know again all right let's zoom it in and let's see what else we need to do so this skin seems you know deeper than this so i'll just come to where my skin work is i'll turn this off again and then i'll check you know my skin can you even see that the skin is not even properly selected at all so i'll come here tap on my skin then i would see how i can use my qualifier to you know select it proper and it has even selected it but the challenge is just that this skin is having you know this skin tone that we have here is a family of the same color that we have you can see that all of these ones have been you know deselected so um let's see how well we can refine or what else we can still take out okay so this will not allow it to affect the air okay yeah this is good so you know you can in fact now i think it is now even worse than you know where we left but of course that's not a problem i have been able to isolate my skin so now you know we can now work on this to see you know how to bring it closer to what we are having there so i have made a lot of videos on how to do skin refining how to qualify your skin so if you have not seen that ensure you go back to that so first thing i did is just to come to my primaries and then i would reset my offset and then i would try and see you know this one has a tone of magenta on it i will see where i need to then you might just want to check your vector scope your vector scope on you know so you'll be able to get the right all right and then i'll push it towards yellow a bit all right i think we are getting close let me see if i can reduce my red All right, so let's compare it on our parade. Beautiful. So you can see that we are we are almost there. We are almost there. So uh, I think this is this is getting at it already. So next thing I want to do is to come to my. Um, let me. So I'll turn this off and then let's see if we can clean our eyeballs. You know, a bit just to get a better. You know 
a white eyeballs. So what I'll do first is to reset everything at done. You know, we copied from here to here. So I'll reset this skin refinement because this skin was not positioned just as the last one was. So I'll come to my, you know, effect and then I'll search for face refinement and then I'll drag and drop. So you want to ensure that it detects the faces in your frame. And then, you know, you would give DaVinci some time to, you know, find the face in the frame. Wari, 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 wari. All right, so I'm trying to refine the skin, but maybe because the face is not facing, you know, the screen fully, just because of the angle. So, but of course, you know, there is always a way around it as long as, you know, it is DaVinci Resolve. That's one of the things. So what I can do is I can, you know, come here and then I would use my... If I, I could just even draw it, I could use my pen to... I'll come to qualifier and then I'll use my pen tool to draw a mask around her face. All right. So, and then I want to soften it and then outside as well. All right. So, I'll then come to my qualifier, check in my highlight, and then I'll tap on this. So let's refine, let's do some refinement so that we are only picking the white part of her uh, of, uh, eyes, just the whites in her eye, in her eye. Let's see what we can do about that. So right now we are having yellow, you know, in her eyeball. I've been able to isolate just these eyeballs. So what you want to do is to, in fact, you could even choose to track it in and out. All right, that's fine. So then what I want to do is to come to my, if I could even just directly go to my HDR wheels, I could go to my HDR and then this yellow, you know, the opposite side of yellow is blue and that is just what we are going to do. So I'll pull out my yellow to see if I can get yellow in this eyeball. Can you see what we are, you know, getting right now? All right, that's fine. And then next thing is to come back to my primaries and then i will reduce my saturation i reduce my saturation and then put some blues all right so let's see what we have before and then after you know and we've tracked it that's, that's just very, very smart. And of course, if you want it to, if you want to still do extra, you can still choose to sharpen the eyes. You can still choose to sharpen the eyes if you want. And you know, that is just how I have been able to do my short matching. You can see the eyeballs, you can, you know, I did everything right here without using, you know, a plugin. And um, I think, I think we are just, we are just there already. And that is it. Now you have the tools and techniques to take your project to the next level with seamless short matching and stunning cinematic grading. Remember, it is all about consistency and storytelling. Every shot should feel like it belongs, contributing to the mood and flow of your film. With a little practice, you'll be able to create that professional look that keeps viewers engaged from start to finish. Thank you for joining me today and don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips and tricks on making your project stand out. Also, I will tell you that if you are new to DaVinci Resolve and you do not even know anything about color grading, then you need to see these two videos showing you right now on your screen. Keep grading, keep creating, and I will see you in the next video.